Dear students, in this lecture, we will look at the points related to promoters. There is a small difference there between the promoters of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotic promoter is commonly referred as a tribno box. That is the other name for the prokaryotic promoter. Whereas the eukaryotic promoter is referred by the term Hognes box or Tata box. So these are all the analogous names there for the eukaryotic promoter. Now we will look at into the points related to what is the use of promoter there in the process of transcription. RNA polymerase binds to a specific initiation sites upstream from the transcribed sequences. These regions are referred as a promoters. So you can able to look at the promoter there in the diagram also. Upstream regions refers to those regions that are in front of the gene that is going to be transcribed. In the below diagram, the plus one is the place in which the gene is going to be transcribed. Whatever regions that have been shown there in the left hand side, that is minus 10 and minus 35 are all referred as a upstream initiation sites in which the RNA polymerase will be binding. Although different promoters are recognized by different types of sigma factors which interact with the RNA polymerase core enzyme. Here with this point first you need to understand what is a sigma factor and what is the RNA polymerase core enzyme. RNA polymerase core enzyme composed of a few subunits with that particular subunit a sigma factor will interact after that only it can able to join into the promoter site of a gene. So in this case the most common sigma factor that is present in the E. coli is a sigma 70. It is a major sigma factor that occurs during the normal growth of the cells. We will look at into more points related for the RNA polymerase enzyme and the importance of sigma factors separately under a topic of RNA polymerases. So the most conserved sequence in the sigma 70 promoters is a 6 base pair sequence which is found in the promoter of many or different kinds of E. coli genes. This sequence is centered at around minus 10 position. You can look at there in the diagram. That is the position at which a 6 base pair sequence have been present. That is the region in which the DNA will be unwinded. So this sequence is centered around minus 10 position with respect to the transcription. You can able to look at another position called as the minus 35 region. It is a site at which the RNA polymerase sigma factor will be interacting. So minus 35 is the region in which the RNA polymerase sigma factor will be recognizing and interacting whereas minus 10 is the region in which the DNA will be unwinding. DNA will start unwinding from those region itself. That facilitates the further binding of the RNA polymerase there in that region. That for that purpose only the DNA is getting unwinding on the minus 10 region of a gene. Next we look at the explanation related to the eukaryotic promoter. As I already told it is referred as a Tata box or Hognes box. In many eukaryotic promoter they found to contain a sequence called as a TATA. That is the reason it is referred as a Tata box or it is also referred as a Hognes box around a 25 to 35 base pair upstream from the start site of the transcription. This particular promoter will be present. This is the region in which the RNA polymerase will be binding. Some eukaryotic genes found to contain initiator element which is present instead of the Tata box kind of promoters. These initiator elements are located around the transcription start site and other promoters have either a Tata box nor a initiator element and these genes are generally transcribed at a very low rates. That is compared to that of Tata box containing genes, initiator element containing genes are transcribed at a low rate and the initiation of transcription may occur at a different start site over a length of about 200 base pairs. Eukaryotes also found to possess certain regulatory elements which are located upstream to that of the promoter. The main role of the regulatory elements is to increase the low activity of the basal promoters. One example is SP1 box. It is an example for a regulatory element which is found upstream of many genes 
both with and without data boxes. So, these sequences are often located within 100 to 200 base pair upstream from the promoter and this particular sequence are a kind of upstream regulatory elements. Shortly, it is referred as URIs. They play an important role in ensuring an efficient transcription from the promoter of that particular gene. Sometimes, the transcription of the eukaryotic promoters may be stimulated by certain control elements that are located several thousands of base pair away from the transcription start site. Such kind of control elements are technically referred as enhancers. They are non-promoter DNA element that bind with the protein factors and they can able to stimulate the process of transcription. The next important thing that is associated there with the transcription are transcription factors. They are all mainly certain protein binding factors that bind to the DNA sequence and which can able to increase the rate of the transcription. When they are attaching that to the DNA molecule and they control the flow of genetic information from DNA to the messenger RNA. They are commonly protein that may be binding to the DNA domains. With this transcription initiator factors that is protein, some other protein can also join and they can play a major role there in the transcription process. They bind generally to the enhancer or promoter regions of the DNA and they can able to influence the following process. They can stabilize or block the binding of RNA polymerase to a DNA. They can catalyze the acetylation or deacetylation of the histone protein. These two process can able to influence there on the expression of a gene in a cell system. They can recruit co-activator or co-repressor proteins. As I already told, other proteins are also joining there with the transcription factors and they are performing the role in the transcription. These proteins that is co-activators and co-repressors along with the transcription factors can able to form a transcription factor DNA complexes. That is the one that have been shown there in the below diagram also. Say for example, this kind of transcription factors are playing a larger role there in the tax genes that are involved in early animal development for specification of specific tissue formation or they are associated there with the SOX genes expression which is involved in the sex determination of an organism. There is a, some small difference existing between the transcriptional factors of the bacteria as well as the eukaryotic organism. In bacteria, transcription initiation generally requires an RNA polymerase and a single general transcription initiation factor which is simply referred as a GTF. They are also referred as a sigma factor. Whereas in eukaryotic and archaea, the transcription initiation factor requires RNA polymerase 2 and a several sets of general transcription initiation factor proteins. Say they all together form into transcription pre-initiation complexes which will be arranged in the gene as shown there in the diagram. So that is the way in which they will be arranged there. So this multiple general transcription initiation factors includes TF2A, TF2B, TF2D, TF2E, TF2F and TF2H. So various factors along with the RNA polymerase enzyme joins together and they can able to initiate the transcription there in the eukaryotic organisms as well as in the archaea.